Today we are going to talk about uh, steady and turbulent flows in the beginning of chapter 5 in physics uh, and this chapter is called hydrodynamics. So here we are dealing with fluids in motion or liquids that move. So um, talking about the motion of liquids, we uh, the motion of liquids is called a flow. It's called a flow and flows have two types, steady flows and turbulent flows. So we will begin with steady flows. Here is an example for a steady flow. So, as we have seen, um, if we have a tube like that, the liquid moves in adjacent lines, and these are called streamlines. So, these are called streamlines and the streamlines move perpendicular to each other and their number is constant so that they move uh, at narrow areas they compress at wide areas they um, move apart from each other and the velocity of the uh, liquid or the rate of flow of the liquid is affected by the cross-sectional area of the tube. So as long as the streamlines are compressed, the velocity is high. As long as they move away uh, or move apart from each other, the velocity or the rate of the flow decreases. And any perpendicular or uh, the tangent, uh, the tangent to the streamline at any point determines the instantaneous velocity of the particle of the liquid at that point. So the point here is moving this way. Then if we draw a tangent to this point, the um, particle is moving this way. If we draw a tangent to this point, then the particle is moving this way and so on. So drawing a tangent show us that shows us the uh, instantaneous velocity direction of the particle of the liquid at that point. So this is the form of the steady flow. So what are the conditions that if applied the flow is called a steady flow? Well, the first of all is that the rate of flow is um, constant along its path because uh, the liquid is incompressible. This means that we cannot compress the liquid in a volume smaller than its original volume. For example, I cannot compress one cubic meter of water in half a cubic meter of water. Uh, but on the other hand, gases can be uh, allowed to be compressed. So as liquids are incompressible, uh, as we mentioned, the number of streamlines is constant, but they just move apart or they compress according to the cross-sectional area of the, of the tube. Also, um, the velocity of the streamlines flowing throughout the tube is independent from time. Normally, we know that velocity equals the distance moved over the time consumed. So here, the velocity depends on two factors, the distance and the time. But in uh, determining the velocity of the flow, we don't have the time in the equation uh, used, as we will know later. So time is not a factor. It's not an affecting factor on the velocity. So the velocity is independent from time. Also, the steady flow is an irrotational flow. This means that there are no rotations or vortices that occur inside the tube while the um, 
while the streamlines are moving. Vortices like that. So, as the formation of vortices occur, the flow turns into a turbulent flow. So, no vortices. And finally, uh, we have to know that steady flow actually contains two other types, so that in between the streamlines or the layers, there is a friction. There is a friction that slows down the flow of the liquid. It's called a viscous. It's called a viscous flow, according to viscosity. And if there is no friction between the layers or even the sides of the tube, it's called a non-viscous flow. It's called a non-viscous flow. So that's all we have about the steady flow.